In this video, I'm going to go through my complete 2023 gear breakdown, all the different setups that I use, what I'm carrying on my body, what I'm carrying on my back, all the stuff I take with me so I'm prepared for every contingency. And hopefully this video helps you, you know, identify things that you need and don't have and or give you different ideas for things that maybe you're doing differently and want to try out. And then you can as well go in the comments and tell me what you think. Hey, you could do this better if you did this, because I'm always, always looking for better ideas of how to set my stuff up and have something that makes things easier. So I'm going to try to go through as fast as I can. I'm not going to spend too long on every, on one little thing, but I am going to show you what I'm carrying and then give you a quick tidbit about why I'm carrying it. So let's dig into it. Hey, I'm Mike, the Everyday Bow Hunter. I love if you hit that like button, hit that notification bell. Please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you back. Um, really trying to build this channel and we can only do it with your help. So I'd really appreciate it. Okay, let's start off with what I'm carrying on me. So first off, I'm, I'm using the Cruiser XC saddle. It's expansion shaber I'm using for the first time. It's one of the items I'm testing this season. I have hooked up to it two Molly pouches uh, at magazine dump pouches. I that allow me to put my ropes in. This one has my lineman's rope on this side and on my right side, I have my tether, but inside that pouch, I always have one of these, a hero clip. It's for contingency, so I can hook something up if I need, it, need to. That's in there. The next thing that goes in there, my gear strap that goes on the tree. It's also my bow holder. I have little clips here to hang stuff on in the tree. This goes in here because it's the second thing to come out after my tether does. And of course, then my tether goes in. Both of my tethers are from Tethered and they are uh, 11 millimeter ropes. I like the thicker rope actually because I like to be I like to be able to grip it, especially when I'm in the tree. The thinner ropes, you can't do that. It's nice that they're lighter and all that stuff, but I still prefer the, uh, I still prefer the 11 millimeter ropes. Okay, moving on. On my body, before we get into the backpack, I, Always have in my pocket my milkweed pouch because as I'm going in, I will drop milkweed at different points to see if the wind is shifted and it's going into where I'm going to hunt. If it is, I back out. Therefore, this is an important thing to have right in my pocket. The next thing I have in my pocket is I have my release. I always have that on me, usually in a cargo pocket so it's secured and can't come out of my regular pockets where if I have zipper, zippered pockets, it's zippered up. Have that in there. I also have my uh, headlamp, my trophy line headlamp. It's small, it's red light capable. So when you're going into your tree, you have that red light so you're not scaring things off as you're getting up into your tree. Um, this is a great light for because it's so small. It can also fit, a lot of times I'll dump it in one of these dump pouches after the fact in the morning, you know, on a morning hunt. And then the evening hunt, I'll have it in there usually and I'll pull it out. But a lot of times, you know, especially on evening hunt, I'll just put it in my pocket. Also on me, is this Leatherman Wave. I always have this on my belt. That way I have, if any problems happen along the way, you get hung up on something, you never the stu know the stupid stuff that's gonna happen when you're walking in. You always have this on you, because uh, believe me, I can't count the number of times I needed to use it. Then on me as well is my compass. I always have either this or I have another compass too. I always take these because the one thing that I know for sure, and it has to be set at the proper declination for the area you're hunting in, the magnetic declination, just going straight north and listening to the compass without knowing that can get you way off course. But anyway, I use this to make sure that my tree and where I'm hunting, where I'm facing, that that's what the wind direction is supposed to be before I get up. I drop milkweed to confirm. I, and when I'm scouting, I use this as well to ensure that I know when I come back the exact wind I need to be at to hunt that particular spot. So the compass is always on me. Okay, backpack. Now this is the Trophy Line Palisade Pack. I used the uh, K's 2.0 pack last year. I'm really testing this out this year. So I haven't used it. I can't say how good it is, but I, I like it that it's molded and I can you know put my camera gear and stuff in there and not worry about it getting beat up as much. I was really worried about that last year with the K's 2.0 pack. But the thing is special about these packs that really nobody else is running is it has a specific place to put your platform. Another item I'm testing also from Cruiser is the Cruiser Mini Seeker platform. This is actually just a hair bigger than the tethered uh, Predator platform I was using last year. So that's what I'm using there, and this is how I configured that. Then I use the, still using the tethered 
Skeletor climbing sticks. I love these climbing sticks and really haven't found anything else that I like more. They have the uh, the Dyna rope on there, which is basically am steel rope. It, they didn't have to do any mods to get up in the tree, so I really love them. I like the way this pack lays out that I can put the sticks on the side here and the platform here, so it works out really great for that. And when I get to the tree, all I'm doing is I'm popping these off to begin to climb. You see there's my sticks coming off that side we'll get more into the pack here in a second but like i said with my skeletor climbing sticks my primary stick here always has two step aider on it so the first thing that come out i don't have to hook it hook it up that's my primary stick that goes in the tree the very first stick so that i use my aider at the bottom and always have that there it's a great setup for me all right back to the palisade pack you can see here i can easily pop this and now my platform's coming out and with the palisade pack this is molded too and it actually has little things you can almost use it as a seat out in the woods we'll have to see if i ever use that one of the things i have on the side of my pack here is i have a, a lone wolf camera arm that i use for my camera setup it's very light and i don't even really notice it on here so uh, nice to have that right there to pull out when i get in the tree in the pack itself, I have multiple items. So let's talk about each one of them. First, I have my drag rope, and you can see this has got a, years and years of uh, stains on it. One thing I like about the fluorescent orange on this is when you're dragging a deer <laughs> through the woods, you don't want somebody shooting at you, and it sounds like who would do that? Believe me, there are people out there that do that. So have that. Then I have field dressing gloves because I don't want to get everything I own covered in blood. Next, I have my laser range finder it's for a bone collector one cheap one it's like 99 bucks 89 bucks something like that it has worked great for me it all ha it has the uh, elevation compensator in there so you get an accurate distance to your target first thing i do when i get in the tree it, once it's light or if i hunt in the afternoon is to laze different landmarks out in front of me. So I have exact distances. So if a deer comes in anywhere near those, I can compensate correctly and get my shot off without trying to, to laser range find the deer as they're walking in. Okay, in addition, I have my gear light flashlight. This adjusts different, uh, or just extremely bright white light. I will have a backup headlamp in there for that. I have a radio. A lot of the times that we're hunting, we do not have cell coverage. So uh, everybody I hunt with has one of these radios to the same channel and we do it for safety. Sometimes we're close enough where we do a little chatting while we're hunting, but uh, it's, it's extremely nice to have, especially since it does have an SOS channel if something happens to you. I carry this, this Ben's insect shield uh, mosquito net. If the bugs are extremely bad, I will put this mosquito net over my face and has insect shield barrier in it that will keep the bugs away. It's a great little cheap little thing to get on Amazon, especially for the early season. Works great. I have this marking tape. Take this out with me in case we need to mark the trail, a blood trail or something to track a deer. Allen wrenches, I have this. I've had to fix my bow and bow sight in the stand before and I always want to have this with me, even if it's after the fact to have this with you. It's important. I have my primary gut and knife, and this is really my, my skinning knife to get the skin off. My uh, primary gut knife is I have this Havilon knife and uh, that's always in, in its sheath. The Havilon knife is a great thing to have and it's small. It's really nice to... Uh, folds down nice and into this pouch and have my spare blades in there as well so have that hunting license in Penn in Pennsylvania we have to tag this to the ear the only thing I'm missing right now is I need to get some zip ties I need to put zip ties in my bag so that I can put it on if I get something I have my grunt tube call this is a Woodhaven custom calls call it's the uh, intimidator ninja it is a great call <laughs> and uh, I, I couldn't live without it. It's a great call. And I have the Primos Deer Bleak can. Used the heck out of this and had a lot of success with this as well. I take a couple gear ties and these are just flexible ties you can tie anything up with. I always have these as a contingency. Then I have, uh, I have a bow rope I take with me just in case I do need to pull the boat up, bow up, but I'll show you what else I use it for here in a couple minutes. One thing I failed to mention is a lot of times carrying on me, walking in, I have a, a strap, Not I don't use it just like this, is my Vortex Vanquish 
of binoculars. A lot of places where I hunt, I'm not getting long distance glassing. So I will use these in the woods. Only usually got maybe a hundred yards at most you can see with some of these spots that I hunt. If you're lucky, 150, depending if you're up on a bench or something. But these are invaluable, nice and small. Don't wear you out, don't have a bunch of weight to them. Now here are my other Vortex binoculars. These are my Crossfire HD 10 by 42s. These are great for glassing at distance. They are excellent, especially in the area that I'm at. Still don't have a massive amount of distance to, uh, to uh, glass, but it's really, really great to have these binos when I do need to do that. So these are invaluable as well. One of the best purchases I've ever made. And last but not least, you know you sweat to death going in. I hate getting my tree and being all sweaty, knowing that I'm just emanating bad scent. So I will take, not this package, because you can hear how, how noisy that is. I will take one of these heavy-duty washcloths, is what it is. It's not just your scent wipes. It's a heavy-duty scent washcloth, and wipe down with it. And I'll take a uh, Ziploc bag like this, and I'll put a wipe in to take with me when I go. Um, I don't even care if you're into scent control. This is a great great way to just clean yourself up when you're getting to the stand and do it without putting a bunch of scent, extra scent out there. Okay, this year I'm using the same bow as I did last year. It is a definite budget bow. It is the Bear Alaskan. I got it for around 500 bucks, maybe just a little over 529, something like that. It came as a ready to hunt bow, but I really didn't keep anything on there because I didn't like any of the stuff on it. I put a, I have a quad uh, rest. I have a Trophy Ridge Pursuit single pin sight, which I do not like, but because it's stripped and the bolt's stripped in there, I don't want to rip it out before the season and put my Apex uh, Covert Pro on. So I'm stuck with this sight. The good thing is I'm completely dialed in and shooting great with it. So I'm not changing anything at this point. I am using a Sunya Archery Expedition Pro stabilizer the stabilizer is i have never hunted with anything quite as long you can see but i was really off on this bow i was really having a hard time maintaining my sight picture and my aiming points so as soon as i put that on it completely changed everything and i've been destroying everything ever ever since so that's why i have that on there and i will hunt with it and i don't care what anybody thinks okay now i have a trophy ridge five arrow quiver on here it's removable it'll come off when i get in the tree and see this is what i hang hang it with and the arrows we'll talk about here in a second the arrows i'm shooting a zmr 350 spine and the broadhead i have is a magnus black hornet not the sir razor just the straight magnus uh, black hornet now these zmrs are about 450 grains not quite as heavy as i wanted last year i shot the hmrs at a 605 grain that's just a little heavy for me really slowed it down this is keeping me right where i want to be and it, i'm drilling everything with it so i love it right now it's only got like a 15 percent foc i wish it had just a hair more but that's like i said it's shooting great so i can't complain i also have a right helical fletching setup on here four veins really works out good for me i wanted to shoot a single bevel i wanted to shoot a single bevel broadhead this year but had issues with uh, buying the wrong size totally on me so i stuck with the black hornets and i think that's going to work out pretty good um, this is if you don't know this is from method archery the links will be down below like i said at the beginning of the video i hunt multiple different setups and there's different reasons for it so if it's raining out or i know rain's in the forecast and it's it's calling for a considerable amount i will not saddle hunt i do not want my ropes getting soaked especially if i'm on a multi-day hunt i don't want to go through having to dry my ropes out it's really bad for the life of your ropes to continue to get them wet and put tension on them that'll cut the life of your ropes in half you don't want that so what i do instead is i will switch to my novix stand and i actually switch to this different times for other reasons as well depending on the trees in the area and what i'm hunting etc and this is the novix helo stand and extremely light great stand love it with it, I use their easy hang and hunt system. I put this on the tree before I ever pull the stand up and all I gotta do is hang it on there, put my Versa strap on and I'm done. Now, with the sticks, I have a sticks quiver. We'll actually mount all four sticks. I got 32 inch climbing sticks with the Novik stand. You can see here, extremely long sticks, 32 inch, really get you high in the tree if you want. And you see here, I don't have the normal Versa strap that's used with these sticks on here. I modded this and I use it from Latitude Outdoors. It's Amsteel Daisy Chain, it has uh, daisy chain loops here. So you can actually hook this around the tree, 
back onto the Versa button here at on any tree. And I got way too much of it too. I think it's about eight foot of rope, but it allows me to go up a tree quietly and not having to put all the straps and clang around with this. And it's a lot quieter. It's a lot lighter, easier to carry, and I highly recommend it for any stick that you're running. I don't care what it is to go and get one of these AM Steel Daisy chains. And the biggest difference when I'm walking in as far as, as far as carrying stuff, when I am doing that hang and hunt setup is, of course, I have my safety vest. And in the safety vest, I have my lineman's rope here, and then I have a tree tether as well for getting myself in the tree. And when it comes to ground hunting, if I'm still hunting or if I'm doing active scouting and I want to set up quick, and I know I'm going to be doing that, a lot of times I will take this out. The first light uh, leaf vest here, it's very light, uh, great, really camels you up. I've had a deer walk right up on me wearing this. And the hood, of course, great for turkey season too. With that, if I'm truly going light and I want some camouflage, I'll take this Cabela's blind with me. All this is is a skirt. It goes up in front of you. It's a three foot by four foot and it deploys out easily, stands nice and gives you a little cover. What I really like is the True Timber Strata camo, camo on it, which is a great dispersion style camo as I talk often about. I really like it. So uh, as far as setting this up, it's quick and easy. If you're going light, it does have the strap on there where you can put it over your shoulder and carry it. And it's not, it's, doesn't weigh hardly anything. And last but not least, I have this uh, I have this 270 degree see-through blind. I have uh, this is a gift from my wife, and I went to hunt almost identical blind last year, and I put it at a real remote spot in a little field that didn't have any trees you can hunt out of. And uh, by the time I got out there and hunted, it, a bear had destroyed it. So this is this is take two. Don't know if I'll get to use it this season, but if I find the right spot, I will put it in there. With that, that's everything. If you have any questions, you want to find out more about the gear I talked about, put you know, put your questions in the comments below. You know, read the description, go out, check out the products I just talked about, and see for yourself. And if you have alternates to this or better ideas, let me know. I would love to hear from you as what you're using, what you think would be better than what I'm currently using, because I could always use a better way of doing things. So I appreciate it. So please subscribe hit that like button, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.